Tonight on What's in XT, William Regal, busier than a schoolboy at the Vatican. <laughs> busier than a dyke in a hardware store? We're going to hell! Support! No DQ! Welcome everybody to What's NXT for May 15th, 2019. I am your host, the Rated R Reviewer, Stefan Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good evening, wrestling fans. The Gentleman Jerry Slaughter. Good morning, wrestling fans. That's right, it is morning. Uh, we thought about doing this live just as a test for when we finally do reach 100 subscribers on Aftermatch Wrestling, but um, it was a little late to be making that decision. And I can't remember how to do it, and it's getting early in the morning, and I gotta go to bed. So we're gonna knock this out. This was a fairly quick episode of NXT. It had four matches, which of course I love, but it was like 50 minutes. Like, it wasn't even an hour. Like, it was really short, um, very to the point. As we said, a lot going on with William Regal. Everybody wants to talk to William Regal. I thought it was maybe not as good of a show as it was last week, but a pretty good show. What did you think about it, Jerry? I think what they were trying to do with this show was the same thing they had to do with the last takeover. So <coughs> it's like so much, so many different changes have been made, and now we have to have to shuffle around the card because it's no longer even being held in San Jose. Right. So they had to completely change the location, completely change everything up, and then with the. Uh, Viking Raiders getting called up and everything too. That's that throw through a wrench kind of a plan as well. Probably like you know any kind of tile defense or anything. So they really had to speed things up and start setting up matches for takeover. And that's what we got tonight. A lot of takeover matches set up. I am happy with all of them though. Like oh they, yeah, even when they're pulling shit out of their ass, like oh, they the, do it very well. It's very beautiful ass shit. Yes. It's like that's why the the episode is so regal heavy. Is everybody wants their match for takeover. Everybody wants their match, like rematches from nights prior, whatever. But we launch right into first. We no longer have Percy Watson. Yes, that is my first note of the night as well. Beth Phoenix is now uh, replacing Percy Watson behind the announcers' booth, and uh, Percy Watson quit. He went to pursue serious acting. Yeah. He doesn't want to be involved in wrestling anymore. And more power to him. Based off of the the current WWE Raw and SmackDown shows, I kind of don't want to fucking yeah. have anything to do with... Thank God for NXT, man. Yeah. Thank God for NXT. Speaking of NXT, let's get right into it. The Viking Raiders come out, and we were promised this last week... They're here to address the fact that they are now on the main roster. They are on Raw, yet they still have the NXT Tag Team Championships. And... They call it Regal. I mean, you see what's coming. The fact that the announcers aren't even musing the idea that they might be relinquishing the titles because they are now on the main roster. They're not even talking about the possibility of that. And it's like... That should be obvious, and the fact that you're not talking about it leads me to believe this is what we're about to be surprised with. Yeah. When Regal finally makes it to the ring, it, it we like, are not so surprised that, yes, they are going to relinquish the titles. I, I was about to say, like, it was less of a surprise, <coughs> I think, when, or actually more of a surprise when Asuka did it. But at the same time, for, the, for them to come there and relinquish the belts... The fans kind of felt betrayed. They automatically turned on the Viking Raiders at that point. Kind of. Yeah. And, well, that's pretty much like any situation like where, where your favorite band becomes famous and signs to a record label. Or your favorite superstar from a, from a team moves to a different team. It's, you just feel that instant betrayal to you. And then you feel cheated. Like, you're not going to get any more title defenses out of them. Or will you? Or will you? <laughs> so, right when they decide to hand the titles over to Regal, we hear the Street Profits music. Mm -hmm. bow, bow, bow. They come out and they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, we faced you guys a couple of weeks ago and sure we didn't win, but we showed we could win. Yeah. As the reason you're giving up the belts is, is so that you don't lose them to us. 
contrarily, yeah. the uh, Viking Raiders, it's so weird to call them that, Yeah. War Machine said uh, they're giving up the belts because they have business to attend to on Raw and there's nobody on NXT that can beat them for them, so they might as well just go out undefeated and hand over the titles and move on. Um, kind of makes sense to me because really, right now in NXT... I don't think I can't think of anybody that could beat them unless you started pairing together people that could just get the job done. Like Lee Dijakovic. Thank you, <laughs> mind reader. <laughs> um, that's exactly who I was gonna go with, mm -hmm. but in this case, Regal makes the match for tonight. The Street Profits versus the Viking Raiders for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Obviously, this is gonna be the main event. I loved Angelo Dawkins to ask him to play, say, if that's your real name. <laughs> yeah, that's what pissed off the War Raiders. <laughs> to the point were where like, they were like, make the match. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of the main event, uh, we get a replay of last week's main event. That's basically the story of the breakdown of the Undisputed Era, where uh, Adam Cole insists that Roderick Strong cost him the match against Matt Riddle. When I say... All Roderick Strong did was eat a kick to the face or through the shoulder mm -hmm. and buy uh, Cole some time to execute a super kick on the Matt Riddle that didn't even win in the match, just got him locked in the bro mission and he tapped out. Yeah, he lazily pinned him and that, that was his mistake. As you said, a proper pin may not have gotten the pinfall, but at the very least would have kept him from being in position to get the bro mission put on. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, this is going to lead to... Uh, uh, WWE.com exclusive of more of the breakdown backstage outside as uh, Riddle's walk or not Riddle uh, Roderick Strong is walking away from uh, Adam Cole and he's yelling at Strong calls him a bitch yeah he's always messed up his shit a lot, lot of bleeping coming out of Adam Cole <laughs> a lot of bleeping going on mm -hmm. we don't bleep on this show no we don't if we did, it'd sound really, really We weird. drop fuck bombs, not F-bombs. <laughs> that is my uh, new phrase. So, uh, <laughs> after this, it leads into an interview with Adam Cole. Um, we've got Kathy Kelly out there. Of course, he's got Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly with him. And she's trying to ask him something or another. I don't know. But uh, in the middle of the interview, we hear some... Scurrying. Yeah, some comeuppance <laughs> going on in the background. Commotion. Some, Commotion and people are, are are scurrying that way, but out of that walks a ruckus. Roderick Strong, mm -hmm. and he crosses the barrier and he comes up to the guys and he's like, "Look, look, you were right. That's that's everything that Adam Cole wanted to hear. Yeah, you I were could, right. I probably couldn't hear anything. He didn't even have to say I'm sorry, because there's nothing to apologize for, honestly. But he said, "You were right. We are better as a team on the right, the same page." Yeah. And as for your problem with Matt Riddle, he said he took care of it, and he holds up a flip-flop that's got some blood dripping on it. Yeah. Now, remember that. Because I'm like, what do you do, break his nose? Maybe <laughs> drop some nose blood onto the flip-flop? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? After this, we get our second match of the night. We get Cesar Bonini. Bononi, I'm sorry. Cesar Bononi. Yep. Yeah. Versus the returning Keith Lee. Limitless. Back to his glory. This was essentially a squash match. Yeah. I mean, kind of. I was about to say, but I only got a couple strikes in. But otherwise, this was Keith Lee just saying, hey, I'm back there. What's up? Well, he takes over the match at one point by pulling Keith Lee into the middle rope. Classic heel move. Mm -hmm. And he is a rather big guy. And he's got awesome entrance music. Mm -hmm. The best jobber entrance music, I think going right now. Not the best job or entrance, because that belongs to Boogenhagen. Yes, of course. But, uh, best, best, I don't know where his music came from. Somebody likes this guy. Yeah, really they're, cool. they're, they're high really on good. Um, uh, somewhere along the way, um, C Cesar, you know, he's getting a little bit of offense in, but he goes to run off the ropes, and, uh, Keith Lee just holds his wrist. Yeah. And won't let him go. So he puts in some strikes to Keith Lee, who gets up a little bit. 
and then he goes to run, and Keith Lee just holds on. No, no, no selling it like crazy. Yeah, this happens three times total, I think, and then Keith Lee just, he hulks up out of this, and then just starts laying in left-handed strikes. Keith Lee is left-handed, so this is his good arm anyway. Yep. And then uh, leads into a pounce. Mm -hmm. Just an amazing pounce. <laughs> and then what they called a spirit bomb, which is a pop-up into a last ride. Sit down power bomb. Sit down last ride. Yeah. Pinfall. V very vicious looking. Victory. This was probably a two and a half minute match. Yeah, just playing some. But hey, Keith Lee is back. I don't know what his injury was, but I'm glad he is healed. And he I'm looks so, great. I'm, I'm starting to think it was pride. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> We've got like commercials and shit, but we basically go right into match number three. Um, Kona Reeves, number which two. is great to see. Match number two? Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. Match number two. I forget the Viking Raiders in-ring stuff going on was not a match. Well, before before we even get into that, we have uh, Shayna Baszler and Io Shirai being <coughs> thrown again, and that match gets announced for TakeOver. Yeah, um, so they replay Io Shirai attacking Shayna Baszler at the Performance Center. They showed this last week. Yeah. And then this leads into Kathy Kelly. She's outside of Regal's office, and she said she just talked to him, and he has made it official. Yes, Baszler is going to defend against Io Shirai, the NXT Women's Championship at NXT TakeOver. And from here, the Forgotten Sons approach. Yeah. They're heading to Regal's office. Like we said, Regal's a Regal's busy man. Regal's a busy man this evening. <laughs> yeah. Kathy Kelly stops them and she's like, do you mind if I ask why you're going to see Regal? And they say, well, the Street Profits are getting handed a tag title match tonight. And once again, we were, what's the word? Forgotten. They, they pulled a pretty vicious um, attack on the War Raiders just last week. And... Now they feel they deserve the title shot before the Street Profits do, and they're going to make sure it's night that they aren't forgotten again. Well, to be fair, the Street Profits were the ones that came out tonight and pissed off the Viking Raiders. Yeah, if, if, if Forgotten Sons had gone out there and said something, they probably would have been included in the matches too, but... They're just not good at saying very much. No, they're not. So that would have been a bad spot for them. Mm-hmm. Anyway, now we are on to Kona Reeves. It's like, who the hell are you guys? <laughs> um, it, I, it's always nice to see Kona Reeves, but you know he's jobbing when the next guy out is Kushida. Oh, the time traveler coming out yeah. all up in his cosplay. Look, look at all Marty McFly. Um, I have not very many notes for this match. A lot of stuff goes on. It's, it's a little okay. Like the the main the okay. main thing for this match is the fact that Drew Gulak comes out and just watches the match. Yeah, that's my first. And thoroughly yeah. unimpressed, like the rest of us. And he doesn't come to the ring or nothing. He just comes out to the stage and he stands there, just looking unimpressed. Um, my my the only thing of note in here Was that, that I handspring? really liked. Okay, so Kushida does do a handspring elbow, and they say he uh, attributes that to his trainer. Tajiri. Or his coach, Tajiri. Yeah. Um, so that's his homage. But he also did this handspring where uh, Kona Reeves went to run off the ropes. And Kuchita chased him in and did the handspring and kicked Kona in the face. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Kona goes outside and then Kushida goes up top and comes off with a swanton onto, uh, onto Reeves on the outside. And that was, you know, like the top rope boom. Yeah. And then from there... He goes in and uh, he locks in that that almost Kimura lock, the hoverboard, like, the hoverboard yeah. like but in a uh, in a position like where he's hugging uh, Kona Reeves like a, a guillotine would, you know. Yeah. So Kona Reeves gets him up, goes for a suplex. He falls behind. Eventually, he puts the lock back on, rolls him in the ring to where you know he's on top of him like he does, and yeah, Kona Reeves taps out. I didn't expect anything different, honestly. Hey. And they show uh, Drew Gulak getting ready to leave up on the uh, stage, and he looks completely unimpressed. Just eh. it's, it's not even a, he doesn't even get a peek done shrug. He's completely, yeah. he's completely echoing me at least, and I would say a lot of this crowd because it was just eh. it was it was there. Simple as that. Yeah, 
I don't think either either guy looked good in this match, other than that handspring kick to the face. I've never seen that before, mm -hmm. so dug that. But that was one thing, and the match was kind of short. Mm -hmm. So whatever. Um, backstage, we've got Bianca Belair dragging Kelly Kelly to William Regal's office. Kathy Kelly. Kathy Kelly. Something like that. Oof. It would be nice to see Kelly Kelly back again. Anyway, just we're not really sure why, but then she gets to Regal's office and Mia Yim's coming out, and Bianca Belair's like, hey, you're not trying to steal my uh, chance to get at Baszler. And I'm like, wait, Baszler's match for TakeOver's already been announced. Yeah. What the fuck? Um, but no, Mia Yim's like, no, I could give a crap less about that. What I want is a rematch with you because of the shenanigans from last week and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if get, we're going to get this Ghetto talk, match. ghetto talk, ghetto talk, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's right. But uh, basically it's just Mia Yim challenging for a rematch. And then Bianca Belair still wants to go in and talk to Regal. So she's like, come on, Kathy. Come on, let's go. So she goes to go in Regal's office. <laughs> and <laughs> Bianca shuts Regal's door right in Kathy Kelly's face. Like to where she has to back up to not be like face planted in the door. That was great. No, really, that, that, was really good. that was good that. comedy. So uh, we get another backstage vignette, whatever. Um, kind of the camera's just lurking around. Yeah. And they see Johnny Gargano talking to Matt Riddle, who's got, like, his ribs are completely taped up with a pillow. Something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like he's getting ready to play Santa Claus. <laughs> like, and then some ice on top of all of this wrapping. And I'm like, yeah, that's, never mind. Anyway, and Johnny Gargano's talking to him, and then he goes towards the camera, coincidentally, mm -hmm. and tells whoever's behind the camera, or interviewer, or somebody, um, he's talking about the Undisputed Era, and of course they just attack Matt Riddle, and Johnny Gargano knows that he's the champ, and he's got the target on his back, and he is who the Undisputed Era is coming for next, but he is one step ahead of them. He has already signed a match through William Regal with Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. It's a lot of shit to talk. Well, but, I, I, was, I was about to say, is this also going to be setting up a uh, match between Strong and Riddle, do you think, at um, TakeOver? Because... That's him attacking him, yeah. I, I, was, I was about to say, that's gonna, that, that could set up for that, but then you also still have the uh, chance for Dijakovic versus Velveteen Dream. So this card is already kind of stacking up. So you've got four matches them. with the titles, and then you've got the grudge match of uh, Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle. Mm -hmm. Boom. Five card match. Boom. Just like or that. Or five match card. Yes. Yes. In real world speak. So up next, we've got Vanessa Bourne coming out with Aaliyah. She is facing Jesse, who apparently we've only seen once in the Mae Young Classic, and she got beat, coincidentally, by Conti, or yep. Conchi, yeah. who uh, beat Vanessa Bourne to actually get into the Mae Young Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nigel McGinnis. <laughs> Well, he, he follows Vanessa Bourne very, very closely. <laughs> I think anybody with eyeballs <laughs> follows Vanessa Bourne very, very closely. Just saying. I, I like Vanessa Bourne. I like her whole, whole presence. I like her viciousness. And I also like when um, she got into a ring and she chose that one corner to stand in. And just, <laughs> just a complete disregard for the announcer. Just... Yeah, the announcer lady is in that corner already. And she's just like, what? And Vanessa Bourne's like, this is my corner. Kind of like Sheldon Cooper. Like, yep. That's my spot. This is a spot. Just get out of my <laughs> corner. And then she leads into her corner. Um, I really have no notes for this match. Um, it was okay for what it was, but yeah. Jesse was just out there as a jobber to make Vanessa Bourne look good. There really was nothing special about Jesse. And she, her, she doesn't even really have the right ring music or yeah, dance music. It just, nothing, nothing really clicks with this girl. And her name, just Jesse, I'm like, it's weird. When I hear just Jesse, like, because, like, you hear Uncle Jesse, you know who to think about. The I've just Jesse, like, I think about that character in the Toy Story movie. Yeah. And I'm like, and she doesn't look like that at all. There, although she is from Texas. Yeah. So you could put cowboy boots on her, and everybody would be like, cool, she's from Texas. It makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. Um, nothing. 
And the but music it's, doesn't speak to Texas. She's got this like, like weird hip hop music playing. It's yeah, nothing clicks with this girl. And so yeah, Jobber Squad. The, the only thing I really dug about this match was the European uppercutter. Yeah, that the, we saw. They, yeah, uh, we have Vanessa Bourne get a little bit of help somewhere towards the end of the match by Aaliyah. Aaliyah goes for the slap, and uh, Jesse goes to block, but then she looks like, oh, you didn't hit me, and that's when the delayed slap happens. Yeah. Um, that didn't come with a pinfall or anything, but Bourne does hit this wicked headbutt mm -hmm. uh, that sends, uh, I think it sends Jesse off the ropes, or no, it stuns her. Bourne comes off the ropes, and it's like she goes in for an uppercut, Catches her around the neck and swings her into a swinging neck breaker. It's really great looking. I love it. We didn't get a name for this, but I'm sure it will get one. She gets the pinfall. One, two, three. I pretty much figured Vanessa Bourne was winning. Oh, this. yeah. What are they going to build Jesse towards? A nothing. lower card nothing. It's, 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 especially after last week with um, Candice LeRae and... Um, what was it? Casey Cotanzaro beating him? Uh, beating yeah. Two of them? yeah. So she needed to win. Yeah. So next we have the main event, ladies and gentlemen. The Street Profits versus the Viking Raiders for the NXT Tag Team Championships. And this is NXT TV. Yeah. I can't say I'm surprised by the end of this match. No. In fact, I can say that I called it before the match even started and Jerry agreed and there was no other outcome that we saw and this is exactly what it was. We will get there. I've got actually kind of a half a page notes on this um, but before I go spot for spot, what did you think about the main event, Jerry? I thought it was what it was. As much as I hate saying it is what it is, it was what it was. And pretty much Instead, like this match had a completely different feel than the last one. Absolutely, because the last one had a big fight feel to it, whereas this time the Viking Raiders came out to little to no fanfare because the the fans are pissed at them at this point. Street Profits are hyped up naturally because they're being billed to possibly take the belt off of the the Viking Raiders before they leave. But this this match. Didn't get off nearly as quickly as the last one because you had Montez Ford flying halfway across the ramp to knock them out, like with, uh, yeah. on their way down to the ring. Yeah. But that didn't happen this time. Nope. In fact, uh, the Viking Raiders were the ones that tried to get this match ended early. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. Um, but we checked the clock before this match started because we knew it was a short show and this was the fourth match. Plus, we had the in ring segment. I'm like. And it was given like 10 minutes, mm -hmm. which I was like, okay, enough, to, enough maybe. To, enough to fill like with the main spots and then enough room for whatever else may happen at the end of the match. But not enough time for the Street Profits to believably beat down the Viking Raiders and get a pinfall. Pretty much. You need about at least a 15 to 20 minute match for that. So really my question going into this is... At the end of this match, when inevitably the Viking Raiders retain, are they still going to relinquish the titles, or are we going to see them defend them? Yeah. Again. So, let's start in from the beginning. Uh, like I said, the, the Viking Raiders try to end this early. They go for that Viking experience on Montez Ford, but uh, Angelo Dawkins ends up spearing, I think it's Eric now, instead of Roe. Yeah. And uh, uh, four rolls up Ivar. Ivar, who was formerly Hanson. Yes. So he gets a near fall off the roll up. He goes for another fruit roll up, gets a near fall off of that. Uh, let's see. Ivar and Angelo trade uh, these cartwheels, like where Angelo got the tag and he goes for the, uh, the lariat, but uh, Ivar cartwheels around it and so he goes for a lariat and Dawkins cartwheels around it and then they end up cartwheeling around each other's cartwheels yeah I've said that word way too many times this show is actually cartwheel heavy yes, the was. only thing that happened more times on this show than a cartwheel was them referencing somebody going and talking <laughs> to fucking William Regal 
Like we said in the cold open, William Regal got a lot of action on this the, show. The first thing that came to mind when, when like, at, by the end of this episode, was like the um, an episode of Scrubs, where Dr. Kelso had that, has that one day a year where everybody comes and visits him and asks him for things and he doesn't say no to people. This was Regal's <laughs> night for that. Yeah, because <laughs> somebody had to set up TakeOver. Yeah. Might as well be Regal. Actually, it really should be Regal. He is the general manager. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see. Dawkins hits a spine buster, wicked spine buster, and uh, Ford, Ford with that immensely high frog splash oh lands, I think it was on Hanson, yep. near fall. And about this time, what we all knew was going to happen, and you guys probably guessed it, Our based bar. on... Based on the uh, the <laughs> sort of promo outside of William Regal's office earlier, we For get the Forgotten Sons. Sons. They come out. They cause the disqualification. Uh, well, I'm actually starting shit with Hanson on the outside of the ring. But uh, it wasn't just them. Eventually, Danny Lorcan, or Oni, Oni Lorcan, Lorcan and Danny, and Danny Birch. Birch, they come out and they add into the chaos. And then, oh my god, Ivar does this senton off the apron into all three Forgotten Sons. And then, uh, let's see, somewhere... Ford goes to the top rope yeah. to try for something. And In the ring, Montez Ford goes up to the top rope, but he's looking out to the outside to this pile of people. Meanwhile, there's still, uh, what's his name now, Eric in the ring, and he get, catches Dawkins... By the ears. On the inside, <laughs> yeah, by the head. And from this, we get... Oh, oh, the famous Montez Ford scream. Yes. <laughs> and I would put a cut away, but I'm, one was enough of that. Just think of the scream. I was about to say, pre week. pretty much, pretty much the, not since Norman Smiley has there been a better scream. Because it's almost synonymous now, Montez Ford. You kind of expect to hear it out of him. Now that move that, that the uh, Viking Raiders did where uh, just Roe picks up Hanson. And does like a, a a a butt first into the corner, and that's where we got the initial Montez Ford scream. <laughs> they did that, but to Dawkins, and you commented earlier. I wonder if we're gonna get the scream. Nope, Dawkins not gonna scream like that. No. Nope. Anyway, uh, so I have no idea what that note is. Yeah, there's the scream. So Dawkins catches Eric while Eric's got uh, Ford by the head so he clubs him in the back but then puts him up in that uh, electric chair and Ford comes off the top rope we see the blockbuster out of that pretty much I call it the drop that was sweet and uh, what happens is Ford covers him and Dawkins does a quick or maybe the other way around yeah they do a quick pinfall that doesn't count obviously the match yeah. is thrown out and even if it did, it was quick. It was really One, two, three. quick. <laughs> One, two, three. So they go to leave. And then the Viking Raiders, they do that springboard clothesline into the German suplex onto Birch. And then they pick up uh, Oni Lorcan and they lawn guard him over the top rope into everybody on the outside. Except for one person. That is Wesley Blake, who's still in the ring. They pick him up and they finally complete a uh, Viking experience. And then they stand tall for a little while. The the crowd is back on their side because they just wasted away everybody. And, and they're doing this thing. The war, which, there's war, really, there's war, really no war. there's really no not doing this when they're doing it. <laughs> and then they lay the belts down in the ring and bow and bow to end the show. And this certainly looks to me like they are going to go ahead and, and vacate, regardless. vacate the titles. So maybe we'll get a triple threat tag team match or they'll add another team and we'll get a fatal four-way tag team match or who the fuck knows but it really does look like the war raiders have vacated the titles because they just showed that they could they decimated everybody in the tag team division. As, as if their name wasn't redundant enough do raiders actually leave behind gold <laughs> The, the whole thing the whole thing that is, is like, a good point <laughs> i mean <laughs> I just, I don't think it would be that, that bad on their schedule to show up for NXT tapings until they can figure out a way to, for somebody to take the titles off of them. Or maybe they want them to look strong coming out of NXT. I was like about Asuka to say, the, uh, 
the the main rosters need tag teams bad, but at the same time, if, there, if there's really no tag teams to face off against at this point. We made that pretty much clear on the predictions video. <laughs> so, yeah, this is fine. I'm okay with this. Mm -hmm. We'll have vacant titles until NXT TakeOver, and I'm sure In next week. Yeah. I'm sure next week we'll get an announcement as to how they're going to determine the champs. So that would be cool. But that brings us to the end of the main event. And here on What's NXT, we rate the main event using the General's 5-star rating system. And Jerry, you always go first. How do you rate tonight's main event? Three. There Three. wasn't there. Well, there wasn't really a lot going on. We pretty much like we like when you and I can actually call a match at, before he even starts off. It kind of tunes me out just that much more. But at the same time, I wanted to see what the breakdown was going to be. And even then, the breakdown is what we thought it was going to be. Forgotten Sons coming in and interfering in the match. Yeah, we, but we, all of the follow-up was really cool. Yeah, it, it was It was neat. And the for, match itself was pretty cool. It, it was neat for a set and everything, but after seeing the, uh, what the what we got that last time between the um, war ra the, the Viking Raiders and Street Profits, uh, this match really didn't impress me. So, yeah, do we get a set for another match, but execution-wise, yeah, I'd still give it about a three, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen with the belts, but not the greatest send-off, I don't think, for the Viking Raiders. Great, they get to leave on their own terms, but well, I, was, I was neither here nor there with the main event today. Well, I agree with everything you said, but also, like I said, it was fun, and, and it was really cool. Like, the match was cool, the uh, after match was cool, um, I mean... You, you had a moment with the bow. This might be the last time we see them on NXT. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be generous and go with three and a quarter. Okay. I, I was about to say, this is do a lot of great setup and everything, but... If the match had been another five minutes and had an actual ending, even if the War Raiders had won. If they had won and set laid down the belt, I would be okay with that too. But at the same time, that would have actually taken more steam off the Street Profits. This was the only way to actually keep the tag division interesting, but also set, send the War Raiders out on a proper note. So, Like, this was good, not great. I would call it like a B-minus show. Like, I mean, yeah. better than average. But for NXT, you know, it was... Last week was really good. This was good. The elite rating wise, I'd probably give it about a C. <laughs> Ooh, dang, that's pretty harsh. Well, like ba basically, yeah, we got we got a lot of like more or less squash matches, like in between a bunch of segments to set up for NXT Takeover 25. But at the same time, a lot of set up for it. Am arguing hype for it, and it's only been one episode. <laughs> yeah, we got four matches and an in-ring promo to set up the main event. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't ask for more. Like I, the, the worst I could give it is a B minus, and that's why I gave it a B minus. All right, good, not great. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this episode of What's NXT, and thank you for joining us. Please join us tomorrow. For the NXT party, that's where we will be reviewing episode 43, I believe, of NXT UK. That's going to be an insane one. I'm pretty sure we've got Chris Mace up on the big screen to join us. We may have an additional guest that is pending. Who knows who might be up at 7 in the morning on a Friday. <laughs> but if you would like to join us on the big screen at 7 in the morning on a Friday and help us review a future episode of the NXT UK, yeah. come have a spot of NXT with us. You can find me on Twitter, go to nodq.com forward slash Stefan. That's S-T-E-F-A-N. Or if you just want to find me on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. As always, the R stands for restricted. You can also find the gentleman on Twitter as well. Uh, no DQ general. And also on my Facebook group, Armbar, all capital, A-R-M-B-A-R, exclamation point. Uh, just join up uh, with us there for a bunch of discussions and memes. Memes, yeah. I, I try to keep it like less about memes, but it's almost unavoidable. And there's so many great ones now because the WWE product is so shit. <laughs> so people have figured out a way around the uh, the Ronda Rousey or whomever for favorite wrestler. They just don't answer. Yeah. 
Pretty much. Don't answer your favorite wrestler. Yep. And I'm like, hey, I got no reason not to let you in. Yep. Boom. Done. But if you're not active, you'll get kicked oh, out. Oh, if, if you're not active and I see it um, after about a m month or two, I would say, then you're gone. Speaking of being active, segue. If you like this video, you should click the like button that's underneath me. If you like all of our videos, you should probably click the subscribe button that's underneath Jerry. And uh, find us on our YouTube page, Aftermatch Wrestling. That's all one word, A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H, Aftermatch Wrestling. That's where these videos go first, something like a half a day usually before they show up on No DQ. They also are in HD. Yep. And we also have bonus uh, content with our guests that we usually have on the NXT yes. party. And sometimes we'll just have bonus videos of just random shenanigans. Yeah. I, I, I foresee a lot of random videos of shenanigans heading into Toronto. <laughs> oh, there's there's a lot of controversial topics on the Rated R Report, so come join us for that. Yeah. And if you subscribe to Aftermatch, click that bell icon, because that will let you know when we go live with what's in XT. We thought about doing that tonight, but... We're going to save that for 100 viewers. That's our goal. Or 100 subscribers. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Our small goal of 100. We are at 77. So we are getting there. Slowly yeah. but surely. Thank you to everybody that subscribed. Please share this video. Mm -hmm. um, go on to Aftermatch. Click the video. Share it with your friends that like NXT or NXT UK. Maybe they'd like to join us for a spot of NXT. And help us review NXT UK. Yeah. Or just come on and do a rated R rapport or predictions for an NXT takeover. Just come hang out with us. That's yeah. all we ask. Yeah. We're lonely. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking for new members for hashtag no DQ NX team. Hey, you nailed it. Yeah, I do that occasionally. Yeah. I think that's all the plugs. Yes, it is. So for the general Jerry Slaughter, I am the wizard of no DQ, Stefan Osborne. Thanks for joining us and we will see you in NXT time. <laughs>